Hey guys, welcome to another video. Today we're looking at a couple of 2v2 games played by Kayo and Yan on the NA servers. So in this first game, we're on Kayo TG1 POV, and his ping is fluctuating between... I'm just going to keep pressing tab so you can see it. Um, it looks like 188 and 204. There it is, back to 188. So this is a pretty horrendous connection for Kayo, um, and he is going to show us just how simply he deals with that and does not care about his high ping, doesn't care that he is uh, at a massive disadvantage here. Now his teammate Yan, who is his R RLCS teammate, these guys both play for Furia Esports, who have qualified for their second LAN event of the season, the only South American team to do so. Um, Yan, with a better, bit of a better connection, but still 148. I mean, if it wasn't for Kayo playing with almost, well, at some points of this game, 200 ping, 148 would be considered absolutely ridiculous by itself as well. Um, now, they're up against Cam and Com, uh, who are not teamed together, but they do have a little bit of name synergy here. Uh, shout out to Cam. He's the one who uploads uh, this and I think all of his replays. So that's something you could check out if you want to go on ballchasing.com. You could do a name search and uh, see more replays from him. It's a nice little outplay play there by Kyle, getting a chip around Com. Um, not enough boost to really make anything happen on the goal line, though. Cam deflects the ball clear. Now, this is a team... Furia, and these are players that I love watching play. I think that they've got incredible potential. I think they're already a dangerous team in the RLCS uh, to pretty much anybody. If you don't show up with your A-game against them, you, you might just get beaten. There's also been numerous uh, teams reporting that they're impressed and that they're getting destroyed by Furia and Scrims. And obviously, Scrims are not everything, uh, but they are important. They do tell part of the story about a team's potential, at least. So, Kayo intercepting comms clear, getting a big 50-50 win with Cam. And Com couldn't get back in time to cover Jan's shot. 1-0 to the Brazilian duo. They're playing pretty standard stuff right now, just trying to challenge as aggressively as they can. It's not really a good idea to sit back and react when you're playing against uh, players with less ping than you. You've got to play aggressively. You've got to get in their face. And that is something that the South American players know. It's something that they always do very well when they're playing on uh, US servers. So once again, proactivity from Kayo. And another goal from Yan, 3-0 already. And uh, it's not looking good for Common and Cam, who have just not been ready for these early challenges, have not been ready for the aggression coming out of uh, Kayo and Yan. Uh, this is just perfect play when you're at that disadvantage, like I was saying. Okay, keep it in this 23 boost, because he knows that the back corner is going to get taken away from him. Tries to go for the goal line 50-50, which does end up being well blocked by Cam. Just realized now that we've got ZN at the end of uh, <laughs> Cam's name, and then you've got NZ at the end of Yan's name. Of course, Yan XNZ, that's the name he always runs by. wonder if there's a little bit of uh, a rivalry going on there. Not sure what the reason is. And Kyle catches Cam completely out of position and sets up a fourth goal for... His teammate there, Yan, getting a hat-trick, and that is an early forfeit, which honestly makes sense given how this game was going. Um, if we pause this right at the end, once the scores have been tallied, you can see there's eight shots to two. Cam and Com just couldn't get out of defense for very long in this game, and while in defense, they were not having a good time defending against the aggression from the Brazilian duo. Um, honestly astonishing that these guys are able to do this with, well, <laughs> in Jan's case, 148 ping. Kayo, he was fluctuating between 188 and 204. And it wasn't just at the very start. He didn't just have one spike of 204 ping. There were, you know, many moments during this match where it was spiking upwards to those kind of numbers. I don't know how they do it. This is really quite ridiculous. If any of you have tried playing uh, with 148 ping, with 200 ping before, you'll know just how crazy the game is when you do this. On the replay, it looks a bit more normal um, because we're not seeing the game at, with all of the um, elastic banding, with all of the um, all of the craziness that these guys would have seen it uh, when it was played. And since I think, you know, if, if this was a replay from their POV, we might see that, but this is actually Cam's POV of the replay, so it's all quite orderly quite normal um from uh from the replay from his uh pc but yeah massive props to these guys they really are built different in south america and they they really are something else um but we've got one other longer game uh this is a bit of a shorter game to start things off which i just thought was you know ridiculous from kyle to be able to do the to be able to dust people with this much ping uh but let's watch another game from his teammate yan who i believe right now is the highest rated south american player in the twos ladder 
So here we have Yan playing with Sentinel against Ducks and Evo. Evo is going to be a name that a lot of you are familiar with. One of the best 1v1 players in North America and a player who's, um, I think, making a name for himself in the other game modes as well and will continue to do so should he keep grinding. Very nice air roll shot by Yan. Start things off, puts them one goal ahead. And uh, Yan playing with 152 ping this game, 148 in the last one, now 152. So it looks like he's got, um, well, it would seem a better connection to the USC server than his teammate Kyle did in the last game. Maybe helping him climb to be the highest South American player in the ladder. Lovely flip reset by Yan there. Evo does defend it well on the goal line. Sentinel not, not in the area. Yan again. Immediately in to the attack and threatening a double tap this time. He's keeping uh, the opponents guessing. One time going for the reset. Next time going high into the backboard. And he spots another opening to advance. This is something that you need to be extremely good at if you're going to have any chance being successful on the away server. You need to spot moments instinctively where you just know that you can get a chance to advance and make a play on an uncontested ball because 50-50s are very hard when you've got high ping. It's also very difficult to uh, challenge from close range. That's a brilliant shot from Evo, but it's off the bar and out and <laughs> now a counterattack presents itself for Sentinel. Dux is going to get back and defend it. And that was almost a phenomenal shot to equalize by Evo. It's just, well, it was a great shot, but not quite great enough, unfortunately. Yeah, making a challenge convincingly and forces the shot high from Evo, who's now Demo Yan's teammate. Yan covers the net in the meantime. Now Yan trying to catch his opponent going for back corner boost. Immediately shooting there. There was a decent chance, or maybe not a decent chance. There's a you know, small chance that um, the opposing player in the orange team there would run to the back corner for boost, anticipating Yan to make a well play. Yan trying to keep things um, as mixed up as always. Trying to be unpredictable. Not always going for the aerial play. Sometimes playing for the direct shot or dribble. And still keeping that one goal lead intact. It's not been entirely comfortable. But oh dear, Evo's missed the boost, gone back for it. And Jan pops the ball into the open net in the meantime. And yeah, Ducks and Evo don't look too happy about that one. Evo going back for the mid boost after I think missing it. Or just seeing it spawn late. And that was not a good idea. Ducks expected Evo to be behind him there, covering the net. He was uh, thinking about staying in the area to pressure the ball. Turned to be a lack of synergy from uh, them, giving Yan his uh, goal, his second goal here. He is racking up a ton of points already as half the game's gone and he's on 614 with a couple of goals, couple of saves. So Yan getting ready to attack on the right hand side of the field. Evo actually missing his touch and now almost own goaling <laughs> but he has somehow deflected this safely into the corner. Not for how long. Yan seals the boost away. Evo's gone for back corner boost and Sentinel double taps in the meantime. There's lots of uh, pressure there. Coming off an Evo missed touch in the midfield. It's not been consistent play from the orange team. But still plenty of time left to make this interesting and that Yan clear is not going to go very far and Evo puts in the first goal for the orange team can they mount a comeback here can they keep this close I do encourage you I said in the last game you know anyone who's tried playing with <laughs> this kind of ping will know and respect how difficult it is I really do encourage you even if it's just for one game oh nice shot there by Ducks late reset and the shot in the open net, Jan would have loved a little bit of ball pressure there from his teammate. Didn't have any to help him out. They've conceded again. But like I was saying, go and play just one game. If you're from uh, US East, I'm not sure which server would give you that ping. Maybe playing on the Japanese servers would give you over 100. I'm not sure. If you're in US East, I think it might be something like 140. Uh, well, you, you can test it. Go, go and do a little... Uh, circuit around the world. Do it, Try all the servers so you can see just what it's like to play with a 150 connection with a 200 connection. So now Jan putting in a fourth goal for his team, his hat trick and his thousand points with over a minute left to play. Uh, stunning game here on the scoreboard and the pitch combined. 
Yeah, give it a go. You really will appreciate this so much more. You'll have so much respect for these players being able to do it. Even players who are able to succeed with 90 to 100 ping, you'll be amazed uh, how difficult the game is compared to uh, your own home server connection. We're back to a one goal game. Lovely redirect from Evo while he was threatening a bump as well. Ducks off loads to Evo now. Great speed. Good passing as well. Good team play, but oh dear, now it's all gone wrong. Evo <laughs> making a play on the ball when his teammate was actually moving in to take it into the corner. Now Jan giving him an option on the back pass. It wasn't hit hard enough or in the correct direction. With 30 seconds left, Orange team are starting to ramp up the pressure. Ducks and Evo looking threatening in offense here. Usually when a lead disappears like this, started off 3-0, now you're in a one goal game. It is very much just a hold on for dear life scenario and that seems to be what Jan is doing. He's posturing very defensively at the tail end of this game. And that's intelligent to do. That's something that I think the South American players need to do more consistently if they are going to contest EU and NA and even Middle East at these uh, international LAN events. And uh, the ball does not stay up here. Evo drops it and look at that final scoreboard. Six saves for Jan, three goals, 1,035 points. Um, on the away server. Very, very impressive stuff. I did want to go back at the end of this game and take a look at a couple of goals here because I think these uh, positions are quite interesting. Uh, now Sentinel will not have a lot of boost here, but this is quite a standard thing that will happen. So we're, we're actually just going to rewind a little bit more. 50-50 and a 2v1. Ducks does well to keep the ball in a safe location and also recover on the big boost. Um, here we, we're at Sentinel POV. Jan's teammate thinks about going for a demo, realizes that that's not going to work because we already have a takeoff from uh, Ducks. And at this moment, Sentinel is fully in retreat mode. He doesn't want to go to the ball. He just wants Jan to go for the ball. But if you look at what happened here, you count the defenders, count how many players are relevant in this play between Ducks, uh, uh, between Sentinel and Jan. Uh, you're going to count only one. Only Jan. Sentinel is not influencing this play in any way. He did make... Uh, a little quick drive by into the corner to see if Ducks would stick around in a demoable position. But at that moment, he g uh, completely gives up on the play. Um, and I don't think that that's the right play to be making here. Sentinel, on his recovery, should absolutely be jumping into the air here to try and force Ducks to make a move before uh, getting too close to the goal. And even if Sentinel doesn't make contact with the ball, if he just jumps in the way of this, uh, flies in the, in the way of this air dribble, forces a shot from this kind of range, and Jan's going to save it. Um, Jan also wouldn't turn for the challenge. He would just go back to the net. But instead, you know, going to the back corner, you've, you've left your teammate in a 1v1, and it's a 1v1 that they're never going to be the favorite in because this is just such a such good position by Ducks and a really well-executed flip reset. Yeah, nobody's going to be the favorite here as the defender. You have to pre-jump um, and make a really good read on where this shot is going. And with 150 ping, yeah, good luck. So that's just one example of when it would have made more sense to stay on the ball. And here's another one right after the the orange team make the exact same mistake. So we've got Ducks here with two boost and we've got Evo with zero. They both flip away from the ball here because they're both thinking, well, boost is in the back corner, so let's go get it. But it would have made more sense for one of them to actually stay on the ball here, force Yan to lose control even briefly. Uh, or, you know, force Jan to make a move before he gets into this range. Let's watch it one more time through here. Yeah, Evo in the 1v1 this time, defensively. Tough position, very, very tough position. Um, but we'll need to rewind just a little bit more and watch Ducks POV of the entire play. Doesn't actually get the half flip right either of those times, which would have helped him a lot. He would have generated a lot of momentum and had that momentum to turn with. And it's only now that he gets the half flip right. I'm very curious, actually. Did he try and half flip here? Looks like he kind of did. I'm not sure. Maybe he just messed up those half flips. But ideally, uh, Ducks would have half flipped here um, so that he would have momentum in the forward direction. Because right now, all of his momentum is in reverse, which means he has to half flip to be able to do anything. And then he flips again away from the play. Uh, ideally here, he would have half flipped now or now. And then, he, with that momentum in the uh, forward direction instead of in reverse, he would have had the option to turn and pressure Jan, fake a challenge, 
uh, just get in the way, actually challenge if it seems like it's a, a good good thing to do. Um, but, you know, having both of your players back away from the play here is never a good idea. And it's kind of just a, a thing to remember in Suvi too that you need to try and have one person pressure the ball, one person defend the net, generally, on every play. And that person pressuring the ball should be looking for the main threat in a position, whether that's a shot, a mind game, a pass, whatever the main threat is, their job is to try and shut that down while also blocking secondary threats as well. That's why you never want to double jump challenge uh, when somebody might be faking a flick and in fact mind gaming you. You never want to just go for a big block on a shot shooting angle without hit getting any contact on the ball should the, uh, again, should the shot be faked. Just try, try and have one person pressuring, covering uh, the dangerous option, which here, of course, I mean, the double threat here from Jan is the flick or maybe the fake flick he could be jumping here and then not flicking so ideally you'd have somebody challenging from goal side and flipping into the ball that way if Jan decides to fake you're going to hit the ball anyway and if he doesn't fake if he goes for the flick you're coming from goal side so you've got a good chance you're going to save it um and yeah if you challenge somewhere around here evo's going to be favorite to make the save but from this kind of kind of range evo's never going to be favorite to make the save and ducks hasn't really done anything so a couple of plays here i don't think uh you know well, I'm not. I'm not highlighting this to, you know, blame the loss on Ducks or to blame the last goal entirely on Sentinel. I just thought it was kind of interesting to see both teams, even at the very highest level, making similar mistakes, which often do happen when you're playing with random teammates and ranked, and you can't communicate uh, how much boost you've both got in any given position, and uh, you can't say who's going to go at any given time. But um, just something to remember: always try and have one person pressuring the ball. Uh, forcing the opponent to do something they don't want to do and one person defending the net. That's how you defend in 2v2. You don't have that third man to provide flexibility. You need to kind of just do everything uh, between you having, a, you know, making a boost run, not really an option. Um, driving away into a corner to let your teammate come in, not really an option either. Um, and that's what you'll see from the very best teams in two. The very best players in twos, they will be pressuring or defending the net um, whenever they are in defense only going for boost when it looks like their teammate has ball pressure and there's no shot being threatened um, and they don't need to take themselves out of the game to do so. But anyway, that was just a quick uh, goal analysis at the end of this uh, video. You know, massive, massive props to all of the South American players who continue to find success on the US East server. It's, it's amazing to me that they can uh, that they can do this. You know, you've got KV1 in 1v1. Uh, you've got Jan in, in 2v2, I believe. Yeah, here he is at 22.71 MMR, which is crazy when you think about how many games he plays with 150 ping and he's still able to get this. Uh, I think Card is the highest rated player. Uh, oh, well, here's Jan in 3v3. Where's Card? I, there he is. Yeah, Card, the other teammate of Kaio and Jan, uh, over 2,200 in threes. Again, playing a ton on the USC server. Um, you know, props to those guys. It really is incredible that they're able to uh, reach those insane numbers on the, on the away server. So a reminder to go and try that yourselves. If you don't believe that, believe that it's difficult, go and do a little circuit of the world. Hit play, go to casual, um, and then just give every server a go. So you can now understand just what it's like to play, what the game looks like when you're playing with different uh, total, different ping totals. And you, you will definitely be impressed, even more impressed than you already, I'm sure, are by uh, by these amazing players. Uh, good luck to Fury at LAN. These uh, players are going to be at LAN. And also Calm from the first game there that we saw. Uh, his team have made it to LAN. Good luck to them. Uh, can't wait to see the groups be announced as uh, the moment of recording this. They have not yet been announced, if I'm, uh, unless they've been announced literally right now while I'm recording. Um, and can't wait for LAN. It's just around the corner. Hopefully you guys are excited as well. Uh, but while we wait for it, uh, yeah, thanks so, as always for watching. Uh, take care, everybody. And I'll see you next time.